Hey everybody, my name is JJ Chlupnik. Thanks for stopping by. I'm here to kind of give you an overview of the Mega Man Legends UE4 Redux project and all the different things that have been going on with it. It's been a while since our last video, uh, or my last video, I should say. Uh, a lot of things have happened. The project has expanded. We've, uh, uh, I say we because we there there's several people who've kind of joined the project and have um, helped helped it grow and are contributing to it in a variety of ways. Um, the latest build, which I will show you in a minute, is uh, not available for download at the moment. But we need to do some bug, bug fixing that we're uh, actively working on. And you'll see there there uh, there's some bugs we just got to get done before we can uh, actually you know send it out and have people test it and play it and tell us what they think. Uh, at the moment, um, we are working uh, actively on the project. Uh, everyone's kind of got their own independent schedules, uh, myself included. And uh, so when life gets in the way, sometimes the project takes a back seat. And then, you know, whenever anyone has free time, we jump back on it and uh, try to be active with it. So right now, <laughs> it's an active period. I think uh, from my perspective, I'd like to get this thing done by the end of the year, which is essentially just the opening dungeon. So the, the goal would be to take uh, all the concept art and all the really cool looking elements of the original game and kind of modernize it and have it look and feel and play well but put it uh, through a modern lens with you know obviously updated graphics but we also can take all the beautiful concept art that was done in the original and actually build that concept art out and flesh it out and make it a, uh, a fully rendered 3d model and, uh, and and also you know increase the you know, hopefully increase the quality of the different cinematics and, and some of the things that they were doing. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the goal uh, as an overview. Uh, a little bit about who I am. Um, uh, I started this project a while ago and there's been several Mega Man Legends fan games done in the past and I'm just another guy who wants to, to do that. I started it because I wanted to uh, learn Unreal Engine 4. I'm a professional 3D artist. Uh, I work uh, on a variety of TV sh TV shows, I live in LA, and uh, it's 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 a different different kind of work doing fully real time uh, animation and and uh, game development, which is a fun challenge. And, and honestly, if I, you know, if I'm speaking candidly, Mega Man Legends and uh, Meg Mega Man Legends, Ocarina of Time, and Metal Gear Solid are like games that cemented my childhood and made me want to get into games and 3D and so I can I can safely say that this has been a very cathartic experience for me to kind of go back and try and rebuild what sort of shaped my childhood. Uh, it's, it's been a, a really good experience and, and I, lear I learn a little bit every day and it's exciting to kind of watch it grow and, and see the feedback from various fans online. So. Um, that's a little bit about me. The future of this channel, I'm hoping we can take this project further and get it to the point where we have a very nice, tightly developed prototype of the opening dungeon. And then all of the assets, all the content, uh, the models, the rigs, uh, some of the code that we can release uh, that isn't protected through copyright because we bought some plugins, all of that stuff will be released to the public so that everybody can have access and build their own Mega Man worlds, whether they whether that means continuing the work that's done here, or whether that means uh, uh, just doing your own thing, uh, I really just want to encourage that, and I want to release all of those things. So, uh, without further ado, uh, this is our Mega Man character. You can kind of see uh, what he looks like inside of Maya. Maya is the program of choice that I personally use. Uh, the latest animation that I just finished is his knockdown animation which is uh, supposed to be animated stationary because his capsule his collision capsule and other uh, world related elements in the game will push and pull depending on where he gets hit what the intensity of that hit is that kind of thing and uh, yeah so this thing will be the next one implemented in game and you can kind of see how that works uh, I'm just going to showcase a little bit about what his rig is doing so you guys can see you know what what he's capable of as, as a rig Generally speaking, uh, you know, it's not perfect. It, 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 I think with anything in this kind of field, things are not done, they're due. A lot of times you can make things better and they can just continue to get better. 
And that's certainly how I feel about the Mega Man character, for sure. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, it's it's uh, it does most of the things I need it to do. Uh, for example, his arms and legs are driven with IK and FK chains. So if you're familiar with that, uh, if you're not familiar with that, IK chains basically let you position a character and give them locked uh, locked wrists and elbows. I'm sorry, locked wrists and, and ankles. And when you move the hips or the center of gravity, their body will pivot around those positions, which is really pretty cool in getting uh, things like animation like push-ups, or uh, oftentimes you'll see by default a lot of feet and legs are using IK chains to drive that animation so that way uh, by moving the, the lowest you know that the ankle joint you actually move the entire leg and it's pretty uh, it's pretty cool uh, I got some individual leg controls which is pretty fun um, like uh, peeling heels and some other stuff like that so Mega Man can actually you know kind of be posed in all sorts of different positions uh, in addition to that I also have some finger controls things like these which can also be driven by the hand itself and uh, if we just kind of move these around and kind of see what they do they essentially will move the hand and, un and unfurl the fingers and then I have uh, a fairly flexible spine which will let you kind of position them in any position you really need. And then I think the biggest weakness with this rig is probably the face controls because uh, it would have been nice to maybe make additional considerations for the anime look. You know, if, if this character was to be cell shaded, uh, there's probably some more blend shapes, facial blend shapes I could have made to improve it. But uh, but it does an okay job. I can I can get most facial expressions and and a decent representation of uh, of you know different ex different speaking and that kind of thing. Uh, and so one of the bigger challenges because his eyes are so large and they're designed a certain way, I had to build uh, blend shapes for the eyes as opposed to just having them be joint controlled. It's, it's a bit of a weird setup for this, but uh, essentially when you're building game rigs, uh, a joint based rig, which I can show you really quick, these are what the joints look like, uh, joints tend to calculate much faster than uh, blend shapes. And since Mega Man is the only character in the demo that's even going to have blend shapes, it's not that big a deal. But it does require a lot more computational power to drive blend shapes, especially high quality blend shapes with a lot of geometry. So that's something that is worth considering if you're going to build your own kind of rig for, for, for games. Uh, Alright, let's turn that guy off. And you kind of see some of the other stuff you can do. You know, he can blink. Again, these are some things that you know can be improved, but do their job. Got some nice facial expressions with the eyebrows. You, know, you can kind of make him make different faces, which is pretty fun. And uh, same thing with his mouth. You can kind of make him smile or frown, that kind of thing. <laughs> and then, uh, then we got uh, some other stuff. You know, we can. Lower the eyebrows, raise the eyebrows, make him angry. You can push and pull stuff in certain ways. Uh, or we can be goofy with it, you know, we can make him uh, we can make him do all sorts of things. We can give him uh, we can give him pouty lips. Or make him look like maybe he's gonna, you know, throw up. Maybe we're gonna make him look like roll fed him a bad meal and he's gonna puke. <laughs> so anyway, you get the idea. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Uh, and essentially how I get it from Maya to Unreal Engine is I have a selection set that I built that lets me grab only the important elements, which is basically the body and the skeleton, that, the bind skeleton that drives the body. That gets exported and baked in, and then sent to Unreal as an FBX, and then basically the end result of that will let me uh, apply it to the character blueprint, and I can do whatever I need to do with it. 
Um, the hair is actually driven dynamically as a separate skeleton, and then the uh, uh, Buster Cannon also is a separate skeleton. Uh, I do, I can show you the Buster Skeleton in here. It is built into the rig. However, it is not, it is not uh, the friendliest control. It's a little buggy. So let's see, you know, we'll get a, we'll get a sense if it's going to work for us today. There you go. Okay. So you can see how that kind of works. We have uh, some controls for it. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, uh, you can transform. And uh, and, you, and it's a little buggy as you can see, but uh, but it does the job. It it does actually look pretty good in game. I think uh, it's fairly successful. But uh, if I were to do it over again, I'd probably improve this a lot and try and make it more seamless. And that's about it. That is his rig. And if you want to get a sense of you know how that's working, um, that's kind of the process there. One of the things I'd like to do with a lot of these additional videos is start posting, you know, making of type things like this. So if you like that kind of content, please mention it in the comments below and I will continue that process and, and talk about the different things we're doing to try and uh, capture the look and feel and world of Mega Man Legends. Uh, but please let me know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd, I'd like this to be a more active thing and I'd like to post videos certainly more often than nine months. So. Uh, that is pretty much it uh, for this. Now, if you'd like, I'm going to show you guys the build. And there's a lot of changes that have happened, but maybe not as many that you know anyone would like. Essentially, um, we have taken the overall uh, out, uh, layout of the dungeon and have built it out as one large map which by today's standards really isn't that big but uh, we've, we've tried to implement it as best we can and get it in here there's level streaming volumes and some things like that to, to help mitigate and uh, you know I'd like to reiterate that when when this project started my entire intention was to learn Unreal Engine so there's I'm trying to maximize as many features and do as many things as I can to get better at the process so uh, you can kind of see how that's sort of evolved. We now have, you know, an actual ocean plane and the tower rises up. And one thing I want to make perfectly clear is all of this content is going to be replaced with content that is closer to, I want to say, the uh, actual concept art. So if I'm going to, sh I'll show you really quick what I mean by that. So in here, we've got our Trello board, which we've been sort of populating with all the different assets we have to do and you can kind of see this here as like the ocean tower so one of the things that appeals to me about the Mega Man universe is just how old it is you know this idea of a world built on top of a world and all this technology that's still functional that's left behind I think that's a very appealing kind of sci-fi trope and it certainly shaped my own storytelling and things like that that I really want to do and want to accomplish in my life so it's something I want to implement in this game, definitely. Uh, so a lot of the, the, the assets will have age and they'll have you know some, some rust and water damage and other things that really kind of suggest it's you know uh, how long it's been around and, and sort of the age of it all. Uh, that's, that's, and so you can kind of see this design, you know we, we couldn't really accomplish that in the original, but we will with the new one. Uh, definitely a goal will be to really sell and work on the concept art and make it feel uh, like it's a part of, of, of the world of, of Mega Man Legends. So here we go. Let's play a version of the game. Kind of get a sense of what this thing is doing. And, uh, and please tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Ignore the bugs. Please ignore the bugs. We're working on them. We're trying to make them better. Uh, we'll get a build, a new build, as soon as possible. Okay, so here is our latest build. We've rebuilt the lighting, we've done a lot of things to kind of improve the general uh, quality of life and experience, but one thing to note is that all these shaders and stuff will be rebuilt, and we'll most likely be doing a cell shaded approach, but with a few tweaks. Uh, if you guys like the idea of a cell shaded Mega Man, let me know. Tell me in the comments. Here we go with the transformation. 
And we got some new assets. Some new animations. We got Zenny. Flex refractors. All these refractors will be updated. The Zenny refractors will all be updated and improved. Uh, kick Kickman mechanics are kind of there. We can do some fun stuff there. We also have Perception. So the uh, Zakabons and some of the other characters, they'll at least acknowledge your presence and try and attack you. Basically, AI. You can see an offset on the lock on. Uh, it's uh, some fixing. Fire in the right direction. It's offset. We gotta fix that. And. We've got new animations, like I mentioned. The run animation is new. We have new jump animations, but they haven't been and implemented yet. We also have. Some text changes, so now you can, if you haven't noticed, the cluster gun looks a little different. You can also drive that color with uh, an attack property, which is pretty cool. And then uh, we have a walk animation. So if you hold down E on the keyboard, you can get Mega Man to walk. Just like in the PlayStation game, you hold down Circle. So one of our big buggy rooms is this one. Our trap has been completely broken because we, uh, we updated a lot of stuff to make that update here. So we can't currently attack these guys. They can only be destroyed with uh, collision and not well, I might add. Also, it's important to know that the, uh, the, the trap itself is non-functional. So these are all things we're fixing. They were fixed at one point, but now just need to be touched up. It's even kind of buggy, it's like it's strobing or doing something weird with the, uh, the release. Um, so let me go ahead and kill this, just to show you kind of every aspect of it. I'll show you this, and then we'll go... I'll run it again. Currently we're working in uh, 421, Unreal Engine 421. Uh, we'll probably update to 422 shortly. I think that's in the works right now. And as far as infrastructure and some other things we're doing, we're actually using Git LFS control, uh, large file storage, and multiple people can work on it at once, and we can kind of push and pull uh, repositories and branches back and forth. It's uh, confusing for me. It's new for me, but uh, it's a good idea. Kind of see some new adjustments here. Going. Each one of these rooms will need to be tailor made to match the concept art and uh, and the art from the original game. We're gonna try and give each room a little bit more purpose, so they kind of feel motivated in some capacity, which is something I don't think that the original game could do with the time constraint or not time constraints, but the budget and sort of layout how it has to be. And you can see some of our temp meshes, some of our temp uh, models here. Got the can out, a nice proxy model. These are all things we're working on. We have new animations. So we've got the nice uh, victory animation. I get a sense of what that's doing. Least we have a tenth version of the new doll for scale and kind of get, getting us an established idea of what this is going to be like relative to how big he's going to be relative to the room as we update this kind of thing. But we can't kill him yet. <laughs> the only way we can kill him is through proximity. So we're going to wear him down by giving him a hug. There we go. All right. Oh! Got something. We also have a uh, charge buster. A 
something we both wanted to implement really well, uh, uh, the team and myself. And it's got to be a few things about it, but uh, I'm kind of excited about that feature and uh, develop that. Our elevator is much taller. have it. And that's pretty much our demo right there. So this will be much larger, we'll match our concept art, and we'll be doing a lot more, uh, uh, taking much more artistic liberty with uh, the world, because it really is, it's all block out match, it's all functionality. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, stay tuned for more information. Um, we're going to try and release videos on a more regular basis, and if you have any uh, things you'd like to look at or understand or, or talk about, please leave comments in the comment section, and I'd love to hear from you guys. Alright, thanks for tuning in. Bye.